<clears throat> okay, so I got a I got a question for you. Um, uh, not sure how much you know about motor turbo or DMR, but uh, what would be uh, the benefit of P25 as far as uh, the spectral efficiency and bandwidth and all that stuff? Okay, that, that, that sounds fantastic. That sounds really cool. Um, um, not sure if you, um, you know, if the um, uh, P25 radios, uh, like the Yesu Fusion radios, they come uh, built in with uh, a GPS and uh, you can send data, um, including, you know, not, not only position, location, heading, altitude, direction, etc. Um, distance uh, and uh, you can also send pictures large files you know they have the optional microphone where you can take a picture and send it over the air and um, um, automatic mode select you know the ace fusion they switch mode from um, you know analog to digital so it doesn't segregate so I'm not sure if the p25 has some of the same features as the uh, the ace fusion GPS, but it's not used uh, in the same way. Uh, it's usually used by a dispatch center where they're doing vehicle monitoring, you know, the location of police cars and ambulances and that kind of stuff. Uh, far different from the APRS concept. Uh, let's see, you mentioned some other features there. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, it can also do data, you know, it's, uh, it's used for uh, mobile data communications, you know, that kind of stuff, but um, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just, just doing the standard voice communications with it. Mm. Okay, now, uh, a P25 radio, would it, would, would it also accommodate an analog signal, or is it purely P25? Radios are, are dual mode. You can go analog or digital, but not both simultaneously, of course. Uh, many of the repeaters are set up to, uh, you put analog in, you get analog out, you put digital in, you get digital out. But again, not both simultaneously. Uh, also, P25, uh, it, get, it can get really sophisticated and get into simulcast systems. You know, you have multiple transmitters on different mountaintops, all on the same frequency, all transmitting simultaneously, and they're they're all locked together by uh, the cesium beam sort of reference standard. So there you start getting into the seven-digit uh, figures. Hmm. 
Yeah, I copied that. That uh, sounds really expensive. Um, and uh, I, I, I think that uh, Yesu Fusion radios are, are already as is kind of expensive. Although online with um, ICOM D-Star, they're expensive too. They're not cheap. Uh, but yeah, you're just um, packing too many features. Um, so I I, um, I noticed that you said P25 can do trunking. Um, what would be the benefit? That, well, yeah, I think it, it's obvious, right? You can have... Uh, you know, multiple users. Oh yeah, uh, it's very capable of trunking. Again, that that doesn't really seem to have any relevance at all to ham radio. <clears throat> yep, that's that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, you know, I what I, what I like about those uh, ham radio digital ham radio. Um, Fusion and D-Star is you can, you know, you can program the radio on the fly. You don't have to have a computer and a laptop with a software to change settings in the radio and so on and so forth. But, uh, but yeah, I will definitely look into it. Sounds like an interesting mode. I don't think I'll, I'll be getting any uh, P25 radios, but it's just get good to know, you know, um, you know, it's... Uh, what, what's so different and unique about different modes, you know, of communication. So what would be the classification of uh, P25? Is it also, is it FDMA or TDMA? It would be FDMA. Um, there are radios that have uh, front panel programming. Um, I have a number of them. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're all uh, part 90 uh, radios, so uh, you know, it's actually against the law to, to have, uh, for a manufacturer to put out radios with that capability, with the exception of uh, radios that come out of federal government services. And, um, you'll find those radios floating around. They, they call it, uh, uh, let's see, FCC front panel programming or federal government front programming. Um, all radios are capable, but it's a matter of whether it's enabled in the radio or not. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned that. I was talking to a friend of mine who's got a Motorola, um, I think it was a 1550, and he said it's a front uh, panel programmable, but you have to have a special battery so you can program a radio. So that's that's interesting stuff. Anyway, very cool. Very cool. N1CY. And WB6 NXP. In my radios, I can program right from the keyboard. Um, you know, you can't program all of the sophisticated features in it, but you can program the basic stuff, uh, the transfer and receive frequencies, and the PL codes, and the TPL codes, and the MAC codes, and whether you want analog or digital, and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, the real sophisticated stuff, you have to have a computer for. Um, again, that's... That's a, a feature that how many of the radios have, but it's a matter of whether it's enabled or not. It depends on where that radio came from. Um, many of them are coming out of, out of government agencies, and that's the way, that's the way you get them. Uh, but there's a lot of them out there, too, that come out of uh, you know private businesses, and they're not enabled for front programming. Copy that. Copy that. Um, on a on a P25 repeater, um, you can all only have uh, two stations talking. Not like DMR, right? Where you can have two time slots. Yeah, it's a single channel thing. Not with the exception of trunking. <clears throat> understand. Understand. And does the internet play any role in linking? Um, like linking to different uh, areas and stuff like that. Like uh, with DMR, it's pretty much the backbone of the system. Well, you could do that with P25. I don't know if anybody is doing it, though. Uh, they can be linked by other methods. Uh, they can be linked by what they call a data interface unit or P24 modems 
and uh, the ones I know of, the, the ones that I've heard of that are linked, uh, they're doing it by microwave links. So they're not dependent on the internet. If you have a, a big earthquake or a disaster of some sort, or probably the first thing that's going to go down is going to be the internet. Hmm. That is a very good point. You're right. Uh, we've uh, had a discussion about that the other day. You're absolutely right. And then uh, I guess the repeaters would be standalone uh, for local use and uh, providing, of course, the, uh, they're running on, um, you know, backup power generators or solar power. Yeah, cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Very cool. Anyway, uh, well, um, Glad I got a hold of you, and uh, we had a nice chat uh, this evening on P25, and I think I'm going to try and learn more about it. So uh, thank you for all the feedback. Yeah, well, you know, it's just, just another mode to play with. Uh, I got into this uh, fusion thing, and um, I kind of enjoyed it for a little bit, and then I got more interested in the P25, and, and ended up putting a lot of investment into that. So, but yeah, I keep them both. They both have their their own purposes. Uh, I know that there was a problem with the repeaters that uh, Yacy was putting out. Uh, I forget the model number of it, but it's the most common one that everyone's using. Uh, they're burning up the finals in them right at the end of last year. So I think Yacy would have a bit of an issue to deal with there. But. Um, I'm going to have to look up that FTM 100. Yeah, I've never heard of that. It must be new since I got my, my FT1 and FT400. They, uh, they also came out with an FT2 handheld, which uh, hopefully corrected all of the issues with the FT1. Uh, the big issue with the FT1 is the volume control. You know, you had to push a bunch of buttons to just to change the volume, and that was just so awkward. I can't believe they did that. But with the FT2, they actually had a volume control on it. But, uh, you know, I already invested my money in the FT1 and kind of stuck with it. So, All right, uh, good talking to you. N1CY, WB6NXP. WB6NXP, N1CY, you're 61.4 miles away from me, and I can't believe this radio is capturing the satellite indoors. It's capturing the satellite. I mean, I'm sitting in my condo, uh, in my shack, and this thing is capturing the satellite. Um, but yeah, you're right. I've heard the same thing. They had issues with the amplifiers. It was some kind of a relay, and I think uh, they got a handle on it. I think, I hope. And this radio is got a $60 rebate from Yesu. So I paid $400, $399 plus tax. And then I'm going to mail in my rebate and get $60 back. So it's um, $340 after the rebate. It's a good value. I like the radio. FTM 100. Um, anyway, a pleasure. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, catch you again soon here or there. I doubt it on P25, but most likely here. All right, take care. Have a good evening. N1CY. Okay, uh, good to talk to you. I just noticed my radio is running red hot. That's not good. Okay, WB6 NXT. All right, guys, there you have it. That was the QSO with WB6 NXP. John, and uh, we've talked about P25 DMR ASU Fusion. Um, sorry about the lighting quality. I'm in the shack late at night and using my FTM 100 uh, for the first time. And so it's a long video, but uh, oh well. All right, guys, uh, 73s. We'll catch you later. N1CY with a blurry display. Bye bye.